Hey everybody, it's Elizabeth Kilby, the Missions and Young Families Pastor here at First Baptist Church. Glad you are joining me today on our study of James. As we end this study of James, it's called out a lot of things in our lives. Uh, this lesson, especially for me today, uh, has brought about a reminder that God works with us for our good even when we don't. Um, and that's a helpful reminder. So as we dive deeper in the scripture today, I want us to just be mindful of where God's pulling us um, and what we need to do. So let's pray. God, you are a God that sees all, knows all, and can do all. And yet we forget that so easily. God, help us be reminded of these simple truths. God, as we continue to look into your word through James, that we're thankful of how you used him to pin these words. And may they awaken our souls and put our faith in action. It's in your name I pray. Amen. So today was an interesting day. Um, one of the things I was most proud about happened today work-wise and so able to accomplish it. And yet one of the biggest struggles happened this evening as well. And so when I think about this passage, I'm reminded that God was just as present in my happy as he was in my anger. And we'll see how it plays out. James 5, 12 through 18. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven, nor by earth, or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you'll be condemned. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sixth person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. God likes to work in mysterious ways, doesn't he? And as I read this lesson for the first time, I was just coming off of being the angriest that I had been in quite some time. And these first verses, a simple, all you need to say is a simple yes and no. Above all, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Those hit me because I had done those things and it didn't make any difference. It didn't make a difference in my anger level. It probably caused me to make me even more angry. Um, and it didn't give me any peace. And I didn't feel like the answer could simply be yes or no. We like to make things complicated, don't we? We like to make simple things that God tells us to do complex. And that's exactly what I had done in this situation. Was it the end all be all? No. Did it mess up everything that I was working for for the next few things that I had lined up? Absolutely. And it made me angry. 
but it didn't need to cause me to stumble, and yet it did. 13 reminds us, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. I think this is a great thought because the commentary goes through and it says that this idea of even the people that are the happiest and that things are going so well have underlying currents of trouble. But there's something that might be troubling them. Even the happiest people have something that might trouble them. And yet even the most troubled people often have something to be happy about. And oftentimes we swing so far on the pendulum. Well, you can't be X if you're Y and all of these different things. And we forget the majority of our life is lived in this gray space of carrying concepts both and. We're happy, but we're troubled. We're in grief, but we're filled with joy. We have hope, but we have pain. And we could go on and on and on. There's not any human being that is limited from these things. In verse 14, it says, Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. That's daunting. I mean, we have our prayer list, and that's wonderful, and I love having those names on the prayer list. But I so often think about the names that aren't on the prayer list. The names that I personally would put on the prayer list or that situations that I know of that I'd want to, if I was in a different position, maybe share. But some of those are not my place to share. And yet this says, let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. There's some type of humbling nature asking for prayer, isn't it? It's a reminder that it's out of our control. And that's hard. It's so hard. It's a reminder that those situations are going on and we can do our best to plan. Not all plans happen the way we want to. And yet we're asked to pray. And prayer is not often, in certain situations, my first inclination. Human nature forces us to often think other things. And I've never been anointed with oil, but I can't imagine what that would feel like. If you were prayed over in a way, my mind goes back to how Jesus was anointed and how as his feet were being washed or oil that was expensive was poured over his feet. I've never had oil put, poured over my feet, let alone my head. And how humbling that would be. 15, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Because for this afternoon alone, I had to ask for forgiveness. A prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. There's quite a lot of people on our prayer list that have prayers because they're sick. A lot of people on our hearts that we're praying for because they're sick. 
And our hope and our prayer is that they'll be made well. But the problem that we have with that is that we don't get to determine what type of well that is. And for some people's made well, it's being with Jesus. And that's not a made well that our human nature wants. Made well is something that only God can determine. I love the story of the proverb. It's a folklore, or not folklore, but um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Tradition from a tribe that they needed rain. And so they called everybody together and the elders and all of these things and they prayed for rain. And one boy brought an umbrella because not only was he coming to pray for rain, he was expectant that rain was going to come. There are a few instances in my life of this. Um, one that kind of stands out in my head um, initially. Our children were born premature and my son and I stayed in the hospital for a week, but my daughter had to stay longer. And so we would go and check on her each day. And the day we went to check on her for her to come home, we didn't know if she would be able to come home or not. And something Jesus told me to bring her car seat, which we hadn't done any of the other days that we had gone to check on her, to bring other things that she needed to check out of the hospital. And I was expectant when we walked in that hospital that they would say we could take her home and they did. And so we used the car seat and we used the other things. And that's just one of so many different things that I can think about that expectations and realities and Jesus, all three together, don't often add up in the way that we think they should. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Because we all do it. Doesn't matter. It's not a level, a certain level of sin that he won't forgive. He forgives us. And we have the responsibility to ask for forgiveness from other people that we've sinned against, don't we? And that's the hard part because we see them face to face. I can't imagine just thinking when Jesus lived on earth, how intimidating it would be knowing that he was the savior, asking for forgiveness from him or talking to him, knowing that he is the redeemer and all of these things. And I can't imagine how pure and simple and loving those conversations would be. And that's a hard dichotomy that we have to be reminded of. Verse 16, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. It's easier to come before God sometimes and say, okay, God, I've done this, this, and this. Please forgive it. Sometimes even that is overwhelmingly daunting because we have to realize that we're wrong. Yet sometimes it's even the harder part of going to someone else and confessing and praying for each other. You have to know those people well. I feel like I do. <clears throat> That's not always the case. But 
being able to confess something, to confide in someone, to express those emotions that most likely are raw and have a lot of emotional weight to them. And then be humble enough to ask for prayer in that area takes a lot of courage. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. When we pray, when we ask for forgiveness, it's powerful. It's effective. Can you just imagine if all the prayers that we prayed were powerful and effective? There are some prayers that I probably wouldn't have wanted to pray if they were all powerful and effective. Because we don't think of that context a lot of times, do we? We don't think of confessing our sins to each other and staying in a righteous state. We stumble. It's okay that we stumble, but the reality is we stumble. And yet when we come together, when we confess what's going on in our lives, it's powerful and it's effective. My Sunday school class last week was talking about this as well. Talking about a few things that we were going, that we were struggling through as parents, um, a few things that we were struggling through just in life. And one of us said that we were really struggling in a certain area. They didn't have to. We didn't have to open up. We're not required. There was not a question asked. But we did. And now that we did open up, we have something to pray for each other specifically on. And that's powerful because it's not just a, hey, how are you? Fine situation. We can really check in and ask each other, how's X doing? Where can we be? How can we help you? Um, verse 17, Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Great reminder. When we think of the greats of the Old Testament, Elijah is always one of them. And yet when we look in this context that is talking about Elijah was a human being, like he went through the same struggles that we go through, and yet he was willing enough to lay down and pray to God, hey, don't rain, don't, don't let it rain. And God answered that prayer. And he was willing to go back to this humility space and pray to God, hey, can you make it rain? And it rained. Verse 18, again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain, gave rain and the earth produced crops. So oftentimes we want to add more weight to what we say. Instead of just a simple yes or no, we want to add something to it so that people get the weight. We want them to get the weight of what we're saying, right? Because often we don't feel listened to, heard, understood, appreciated, valued, edified. And so we add these qualifiers to yes or no. Yet yes or no are full sentences. And they should carry the weight of it being yes or no. Our commentary says self-awareness helps us realize that even when things are overall well, 
there's always pesky troubles in tow. And James gives the answer, we should pray. Not do, not be, not X, Y, Z, not give this offering, not give up your golf tea time, not whatever. We should pray. And that is so hard. Just as you should train yourself to pray when you encounter trouble, you should also train yourself to praise God when you encounter happiness. So I accomplished something today that I've been working on for months. And when it was finally finished, finally in my hands, there was the most sincere thank you, Jesus that came out of my mouth. Not only was it off my plate and I could feel the weight of that just being lifted, but that I really saw his provision through it. And there was really this sense and deep gratitude of completion. And then this afternoon happens and I'm exactly in the opposite space. We're not exempt from it. If anything, I think sometimes we're more caught up in it because we often get that self-actualization and that self-realization. So think about it, pray about it. It's also talking about sickness. When it says, if anyone's sick among you, there's all different types of sickness. Bodily sickness, mental, emotional, all the things that we've talked about in our Wednesday night. Spiritual things that we need to take into account when we think holistically about our being. Prayer is labor, hard work. It takes effort and willingness to pray in discomfort. It is tiring. I was talking to a friend this week whose mom had to have some emergency surgery and lives in a different state. And they had visited them and then they had gotten their mom into rehab and then they were just now home. And they were talking about not just the physical exhaustion, but the mental and emotional exhaustion that they had gone through through the past three days. It's all around us. And prayer is labor. Worth it, but labor. One thing I think we need to be reminded as we wrap up this lesson is that our commentary says it so beautifully. As Christians in these modern times, we need to stop viewing potentially uncomfortable practices as something to be avoided. We love our comfort zones. We love it. That's why we get the house, the car, the whatever because it's comfortable. And comfort in and of itself is not a bad thing, but yet comfort consistently often leads to apathy. And so reminding ourselves that potentially uncomfortable practices, speaking to one another about Jesus, sharing your testimony, going on mission trips, giving when we've never done it before, asking a follow-up question that we are not sure we really want to hear the answer. All of those things are necessary. Necessary to continue our faith in action. 
Be careful that you are doing all God's commands so you will not limit how powerful prayer can be. So as I've had to confess this afternoon to some things and ask for forgiveness from some people, I'm reminded that though it's not easy, it's what should be done. Though it's not always fun, God is leading us in a way to grow us closer together, to be this body of faith that not just muddles through life, that makes a difference in the world around us. And when you make a difference in something, that means you move things, things change, and change isn't always comfortable. You've got to grow. And that's hard, and that's a struggle. And your prayer life is going to be this roller coaster ride. There are times in my life where prayer has been the absolute first thing. And I felt so close to God. And then I've ebbed away from that. And then I've come back to that. And we're talking over the course of months and years, this constant, are we doing things in our lives that are moving us towards the God of the universe? That's drawing us closer to his nature, his being, his hope, his future. That's walking in obedience with him. Or are we not? You can only do one. The choice is yours. Let's pray. God, you are a God who knows, sees, and understands all, and yet offer forgiveness and grace. And that is mind-blowing to me as I have been on the mountaintop and in the messed up both today. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for that wisdom and knowledge and understanding that we are human. And that doesn't mean that we're perfect, but it also doesn't give us a free pass to do things that you've not called us to do. God, we, may we grow through what we go through. May we be vessels for your wisdom, for your understanding, and for your truth. We thank you for all of this, and we thank you that everything that we do can be used by you as we walk and journey with you in this life. It's in your name I pray. Amen.